farmland values for the third quarter were up 2% from a year ago. And so that does indicate that there's some momentum. Um, you know, that was the highest increase in six years for the farmland values. So there's definitely a little bit more optimism there. The bankers were indicating that there could be some increases in the fourth quarter as well, um, as they um, had more increased responses than decreases for the expectations there. Um, at, part of their response also indicated that the demand for farmland among both farmers and non-farm investors was expected to be higher over this winter. So that also was uh, kind of showing some positive um, tendencies there. At the same time that we see the higher um, values and potentially some higher values coming ahead, um, you know, there's still a lot of uncertainty. Um, so, you know, a vast majority of the um, bank respondents expected um, stable farmland values. According to the respondents in the latest ag letter, the net cash earnings for crop farmers over the fall and winter of 2020 is looking to be higher than it was a year ago, which hasn't happened in a number of years. And at the same time, we do see that dairy, hog, and cattle farmers will continue to have a lower level of cash earnings over this winter, even though there were some improvements in the third quarter. This year, the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program has been especially helpful for district farmers. They've received $2.4 billion in support from the federal government through this, and it's, it's really been something that's helped stabilize the region. It is going to be um, continuing in a phase two that is bringing additional funds, but then um, at some point those funds are going to run out and we don't know what will be the future in terms of these ad hoc programs and how they're helping the government um, support you know this follows the market facilitation program payments that had come in the last few years um, given the uncertainties with trade so one um, Wisconsin farmer talked about that when these programs run out, it's going to be like musical chairs and we don't know where the farmers will find seats. Um, and so that kind of um, uncertainty is hanging over the ag sector as we head into 2021. For the third quarter of 2020, it appears that credit conditions in agriculture are mixed. We see this in terms of um, higher credit availability, the funds uh, were available um, at, you know, uh, more than they were a year ago, according to the respondents at the same time that we see that. Loan demand seems to have diminished some in terms of the responses um, for the non-real uh, non estate farm loans. But then we also have seen a continuation of uh, deterioration in the repayment rates for farm loans, but not as you know rapidly it's, it would seem as it had been a year ago. So um, there's lower interest rates on agricultural loans as well, which is very um, conducive to higher farmland values um, going forward. But um, you know it, it continues to be um, you know record lows for the real estate and um, operating loan and feeder cattle interest rates. Uh, hog, cattle, and dairy farmers, though, have, you know, seen their livestock, um, you know, feed prices move up s somewhat. So they're being tighter there and they haven't maybe seen quite the recovery from the coronavirus that's needed yet, you know, and the impacts that happened earlier this year. So there's still um, additional recovery needed there and the um, bankers that responded to the survey indicated that they did not think that the um, livestock producers would be seeing higher net cash earnings than they did a year ago.